JB Cycles here with a video on medium term cycles. You know, on my path to a thousand subscribers, well, uh, that's kind of fun. Um, I kind of want to make a video on these medium term cycles, which I always have had trouble with. And um, yeah, I want to show you where. I stand today, my interpretation of this uh, of these cycles or oscillations. So uh, here in red you you see the 17 week cycle. It is or I claim it is related to a planetary cycle which again is related to solar activity and geomagnetic activity which probably influences some biological uh, mechanisms and, and, and human sentiment and the stock market. Well, that's complicated, we don't need to know about that. Anyway, we have this red cycle. But my experience is that this, uh, this cycle is, is not reliable about you know, finding the exact turning points. And that's the thing about the, the bigger the cycle gets, it is more about trend. Uh, but very short cycles are, is, are indeed a very good tool for finding short-term turning points. Uh, and then I th thinking about my four-week cycle and the two-week oscillation. But uh, this cycle, you see, this market low was a bit late. This pretty spot on and spot on here. And spot on again there. Here it gets kind of messy, but maybe that was the cycle low, but you can't really say. And then you have this one, which is early. And then, you know, when you, when I have studied this cycle, uh, this pattern sometimes turn, show up. Here you have, someone would call this an inversion, but you know, market was topping at the exact correct time and trending down and it should have continued down to say a dub, big double low but then it popped up and made kind of you could call it a sideways cor correction a double low here anyway this low is early and then this low is late so this low you can hardly see and you have an early low there and this recent low was actually pretty spot on with the cycle but um, my experience is that, yeah, this cycle is useful, but um, and it is about 17 weeks. But f when, um, uh, well, if you want to trade the market, you should rather focus on an oscillation of about 10 to 12 weeks of length. And, uh, and this uh, oscillation, I, I, o I'm often using this. Um, uh, wavelet for the VIX and what is a wavelet? Well, it's you could call it a mathematical algorithm not similar but let's just say it's similar to, uh, to a Fourier spectrum it's about analyzing data and finding cycles within them and I am using a 20 or 20 year old plugin for Microsoft Excel uh, and in, I have made some videos about it and I have, I have shared this plugin. You can download it and, and try for yourself. So uh, this wavelet um, identifies an oscillation of about 10 to 12 weeks. And you know the VIX is inversely correlated with the S&P. So when the VIX goes up, the S&P goes down. So when I just invert this wavelet, and compare with the S&P, well, then you see we have these market lows with blue arrows. On average, around a little a bit more than 10 weeks long on average. But there's a big variation here. You know, it can be a little bit less than 10 weeks and it can be uh, 14 weeks, even I think 16 weeks. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's a problem. But um. You, so you need tools to uh, to interpret each of these 10-week oscillations. Uh, is it uh, topping out? Uh, is it over and 
is it making a low is it a short oscillation is it a long one um, so often I use I show this one for the VIX because I have um, seen that the VIX is often leading so I made a comparison once between you see this green one is the VIX wavelet and the red one is the same wavelet but calculated from the vi from the SMP data. So we have two different wavelets from two <laughs> completely different data sets, but they are of course somewhat re related. So you know you see these two wavelets are very similar, but what I found is this green one like here is often leading. You know this is turning before the red one. Or if you go to this low the green one is turning a little bit before the red one. So I often use this um, VIX wavelet and then I make scenarios. You know, you, you take from all of these turning points, each low, you make an average. What's the average um, behavior of the S&P after such a low? And then I get these uh, scenarios or projections. And, and uh, like now we are here and the scenarios are suggesting upside and this is the most normal point to reach a market top but there's a great variation so it could be earlier earlier it could be later and similarly we have this one another projection so if we go to the s p we see we have uh, three different kinds of 10-week oscillations. So, so I call them 10-week oscillations, but they can be 12 or 14-week oscillations. So we have these short ones in blue, and some are a little bit longer in orange, and then we have these very long ones in, in green. And um, yeah, it's tough to, to know exactly what kind of oscillation this is. So if you look at this one, it probably started around this point. You know, you need some indicators, some signals to identify where do they start, where do they end. Anyway, you see, with this short one, it was actually a top. So I, obviously, we are not making a bottom here, so we should look for the, the first bottom market low after this point. Well, we might made a market low here. And if we look at this oscillation, we see actually we made some kind of a low at this point, but it was too much, but much too bullish. It, this does not look like that kind of a low we should get from a, this kind of oscillation. So it extended a little bit more and then we had the, the market low. And very similar here. This would be a short oscillation. Market made some kind of a low, but not that kind of a low that you would expect from this oscillation. So we need another pop up and then the correction. Then we have this uh, orange one again, like back here. When we reach this rectangle end, we were making a top. Okay, then we should look for the next low. So there, there you see, we have uh, different configurations, and there are probably more, uh, see, more than these three. And down here in red, here, here you see that is where the 17-week cycle suggested a market low, and not very useful. But um, you need to combine these tools. So right now we have begun a new uh, such oscillation and we, we have to see how it develops um, we could you know make a top uh, at this point and a low at the right end here or we have uh, this orange kind you know that would mean we make the top at the right end and then make the correction or maybe we have this very bullish green one. Well, we have to see. So, see you in the weekend video later. Bye-bye.